trying to find our notes from from when we met to talk about stuff. All right. All right, good to go. Good to go. Okay. Today is Monday, November 14th, and it is 401. This is the communications committee meeting, and I'm calling this meeting to order. Uh, for roll call, myself and Councillor Seifer are here. Um, we no longer have Councillor Johnson on the council, so it's just the two of us today. Um, item four, so just, or, sorry, item three, approval of the September 8th, 2022 meeting minutes. So moved. Second. All those are any discussion? No. All right. All those in you. favor? All right. Thank you. It's unanimous. So next item up is item four. So I figured for today we could do a year in review. You know, based on our charge, part of what we do as a as a committee is look at all the different town and council communications to see if there's things we want to do or consider for improvement. So I just threw out the big ones that happened this year. The e-news is one that we always have been doing, but it has continued to evolve and improve the Council Corner Lives, which were a new thing we tried this year. And then as well, you guys launched a new website. So I figured those are kind of like the big ones, but if there's anything else that people want to discuss in terms of, um, you know, specific communications and, and, and things that we've done. And then follow-up is kind of talking about some of the things we may want to brainstorm for the next committee to further refine. We started that in our September meeting and we just kind of started the conversation. So I'm wondering if there's like a couple of things we might want to kind of bring or suggest that the next committee um, takes on and moves forward and assesses as we go forward. So starting starting to open things for discussion, um, just thinking of the, the three different things, the e-news, Counter corner live and website. Maybe we start with the e news and just talk about this past year. So, any open points? One other thing, like I know we did have um, the concern about having two counter corner corners going. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that ever went to rules and policy for discussion, but maybe we can talk, maybe we can talk here about like. Going forward, is there a recommendation, but an informal recommendation that the committee might want to make? And I'm interested to hear, Allison, I think you've been kind of taking the lead on the coordinating with the council on the council corner live or the council corner portion. And I just want to know if it's working. I've coordinated based on the schedule that we kind of had in place and mm -hmm. the councilor knowing when to um, send it in to me. But um, I think without that, we kind of had like a natural path of who was going to submit when, but um, I don't have one for tomorrow, for example. And I it, I don't know how it's being coordinated among the counselors, but the spot is always there. It's just a matter of getting the information. Okay. okay. Oh, I didn't yeah, should, I didn't either. I feel like with John, <laughs> it might be good for John to do a, if you can do something tonight, I can text him to see if we could do like a quick year in review from his perspective. He sent us a good email that has yeah. some good stuff in there that could be. We could either do that or we could ask Karen to just do um, like the quick intro piece. Mm -hmm. You and I both did that when we joined the council. Oh, yeah. I don't know if Nick did one or not when he joined, but he did. You yeah. know, Karen could that and she could probably pull that together pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Short. Yeah. Just a short introduction to for Karen that might be That's something we idea. could do quickly. I personally always found it helpful to have it on a on the agenda as a standing item and then um, yeah it just helps me coordinate with and know who I'm coordinating with. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So maybe that's a lesson learned because it kind of was like Allison do it and <laughs> it seems like it's good to keep the committee kind of keeping tabs of the schedule. At least the, the rotating schedule. Yeah, or at least like, who, what, which counselor want to, wants to take that day, even if we don't have a topic decided. Okay. Yeah, I think I think that I guess that my suggestion would be that the the chair of the communications committee take on the role that you took on was mm -hmm. organizing the council contribution, whether it was a leader article or the newsletter. I think that should be really a role of, of the communications chair okay. to keep that going. We did a. I mean, obviously, I think that Allison said in private that. You know, the window is under your oversight, and there's always organization to it. You know, yeah. Yeah. Really so I think that's something that I need to follow. Okay. Yeah. I think I think my recommendation for whoever chairs this committee would be um, just have a, a calendar or a spreadsheet 
with the dates, you know, when what day of the week the first and the fifteenth are, because those two are moving targets depending on what month it is. And then, you know, um, when we submit to the leader, it's always a Friday deadline, right? And so yeah. we can, you know, build that into the schedule too and just make sure that those submissions are you know, laid out and everyone can see it. And and frankly, if anyone on the council wanted to see what we, yeah, who we had slated, whatever we could mm -hmm. do that, I think that would you know, be. Yeah, it could be just this easy because it's only twice a month, right? A simple thing could be just to like make a recommendation at the beginning of the year to say, right, you're doing it these times, right? And then just like keep it simple and kind of make the and, schedule and yeah. some right and yeah. some counselors wanted a lot of heads up and you yeah. know and kind of needed that time and then other counselors mm -hmm. are like willing to just but write something quickly so you, you do have to remind them though like that's, yeah. that's the yes. piece like yeah. nobody will remember <laughs> and I'm one. happy to do that too it's just hard when they're you know specific person or I'm sure yeah that's yeah. not yeah that's not staff's job to yeah to do I think well you should, and like a simple thing that could be done to your point is like once we know put it on their calendars yeah. to say a week before don't forget you have to do a counselor corner the next week and just be prepared mm -hmm. so we can probably like there's things like that that can be done to just make it give less, everybody a little touch yeah light touch mm -hmm. make sure they remember yeah yeah what about having more than one at a time like again if there's a situation where somebody's booked and they want to do it because that has happened a couple of times where at least i would get Requests from people where they're like, oh, now I want to do it. And I was like, well, I don't know already doing it, so can you wait? And I think with the situation with Council Hamill, was like, right. he was like, no, I want to do it. And I was like, okay, if you want to do it, I'm not going to. Yeah, and that hadn't come up before. Yeah. So I don't know if, if that's okay that we would say, like, you know, it's not, you can't do it. It's more, we're trying to keep to the schedule of one at a time. But if there's ever a reason, is that something? We want to discourage or I, mean, I hate to make it at the discretion of the chair just puts whoever is in that position in that uncomfortable spot you know puts pressure on them that i don't think is fair but my and i said this when we had the discussion publicly you know at the full council level that my i'm sure not hunch, my feeling is to go toward just having one and just having that be the rule and mm -hmm. if you would like to take someone's spot they can say no i'm gonna i would like to submit it's my turn or they can say yeah sure you can have my spot and still just have it be the one i i think that the the situation that happened between counselor hamill and counselor Cucci happened because counselor hamill read counselor Cucci's ahead of time and knew what was going to be submitted and i don't know I, I don't, don't want to so. create a situation where that's happening where we're like yeah. I don't that, keeping that, an eye on what other people are writing so yeah. that we can counter it or yeah that didn't that didn't actually happen. What happened was oh. Councillor Hamill, which I think that's what the perception was, was that Councillor Hamill got a copy of his. What Councillor Hamill was actually responding to was a leader um, article that he read or saw somewhere in the interwebs where somebody was referencing something that Councillor Gucci was quoted in in the leader. Oh, and so, so it was just a purely coincidental. Yeah, which, um, which the topics were similar, yeah. right? It wasn't like two different topics. They were pretty similar topics, but I think like there was no sharing of Councillor Gucci's article with anybody on the council. I've always kind of said, if you want to share with people, that's your sure. prerogative. And so I assumed it got dropped into a share drive or something. And John, no, and I had to put it, it on the website <laughs> in the yeah, okay. So, outlook page, so maybe like it's too that Was that before it was posted? Yeah, like the day before. Oh, well, I don't think, I don't think, but I don't know. I don't know if that was it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think, um, I think one of the things that we'll talk about in item five was this idea of, I think, healthy debate between counselors when they're on opposing sides of an issue is could be a really meaningful, helpful exercise and informative. Um, I agree. I think the perception was that one counselor got the view kind of the mm -hmm. positions and then got to be the counterpoint to that. Um, so I certainly think that for the next iteration of the committee, that should be flushed out a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I. Because I, I mean, I think that the general thought was, you know, if you sign counselors up for um, 
for an e-newsletter date, um, and they don't want to see that for someone who wants to say something. Sometimes these issues are time sensitive, so writing sort of the counterpoint or the other perspective two weeks later um, isn't really that helpful. Um, yeah. So I think that um, I think my suggestion would be that either you talk about formalizing this exercise of point counterpoint mm -hmm. um, in the form of a kind of a that's the exercise you're going through, or you have some sort of um, and I think the committee, I think the committee, which is committee chair can, can maybe adopt a rule like this that says that if you have two counselors who are interested in submitting an article for the e-newsletter or the leader, um, that there's some agreement that they share each other's articles, you know, 24 yeah. hours ahead. Yeah. So everyone sort of sees that. Um, or not even, like what, maybe instead of making it just kind of brainstorming, like, again, if there is a topic mm -hmm. that we're talking mm -hmm. about that we happen to know that there's different viewpoints, like proactively speaking out and saying, hey, Counselor Slater, you and Counselor Anderson mm -hmm. don't seem to be agreeing on this, and that's okay. If you guys want to work together on here's your view and why, and here's your view and why, and that just gets published. Yeah. It's not a point counterpoint. Yeah, really. no, I think that, yeah. 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 Like here's what yeah. Counselor A says about it. Yeah. Yeah. Two perspectives, two different perspectives on the same issue. Yeah. Like I think yeah. the one thing that was like a nice, outcome honestly of this which for those not behind the scenes like i've gotten so much more positive feedback about the fact that there were two opposing views mm -hmm. that people actually appreciated yeah, people that appreciate. which i didn't anticipate like i just said sure go make the people want to do it i don't i don't mind but the fact that people actually said i like this and even in some of the emails they're like i like what counselor so and so said about this and what counselor said about this Mm. And here's what I think. Yeah. So again, I think it was like the concept of allowing it is nice, but I think maybe if it happens, it should happen more transparently where people sign up to say, I would like to represent this view. If anybody wants to represent a different view, we're open to that. Yeah. I, I, think, I think just laying out, yeah, I think just laying yeah. out what the expectation is going to be. Mm -hmm. um, I think that would be a, a, a much more thoughtful way yeah. to do it. Yeah. Would be yeah. to have two counselors collaborate on one article that has multiple perspectives. I think short of that, mm -hmm. that might be difficult to do without you know one or one counselor writing the first half of the article, yeah, and the second half write the second half. Mm -hmm. um, but I certainly think it's something that could be yeah. developed and built out. It might be really helpful. Uh, so I think we can see more of that. Ideally, everything's a seven over, but we know that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So, in those instances, what is a, a mechanism or a structure that we can have on, again, with some generally accepted parameters or, or approach to that? Yeah. Um, I think that would be worthwhile for the next committee to undertake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. So, also with the e news, I know there, that we got some feedback related to the election edition where people were concerned about how we put the library link in there to express that people could go there for more information. Um, so I know that was a concern. And I think that's there's always like this fine gray line. I think when we're communicating information about voting to not come across as biased and knowing that in the future we're going to have other capital projects, like I think it's worth maybe just spending a couple minutes talking about that and figuring out are there any things we want to consider to just make it more clear when it comes to communicating things on the ballot, how we do it in a way that doesn't create the perception that we're being biased at all? Because I don't think that was the intent. I think it was, here's some information, go here to learn more. At least that's how I initially read it. But I could see how others might look at that and say, this feels, feels biased. So I just want to make sure we take a moment to talk about that. Well, the challenge there is, the those that hold the wealth of information about the project are going to be those that compiled the project have been working on the project and endorsed the project and so there is no um you know secondary source of information and we had this conversation at finance we loosely had it at the full council level and i was kind of struggling as finance chair to say well where is this faq going to come from who's who is generating this faq um, because the library had already created, you know, a five page document at that point that addressed the questions that people were asking. And so, you know, the 
the recommendation from the town manager was that the people who were the most invested in the project should be supplying that information. I, I don't know how we would have provided the information as, a, as an unbiased secondary source. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that they obviously were endorsing their project and then they were pointing them, you know, citizens towards that information obviously gives the impression that we're also endorsing the project. And so I, I understand the gray area completely. I just don't know how to avoid it when I think the general consensus was the people who should be answering that those FAQs are the people who can yeah. elbow deep in the project all that time. The other thing I will say is that I know there were a lot of people that were reaching out to the library for some of the studies and things that they did. The difference, I think, maybe a little bit between the library and probably some of the other town things is I don't think under their um, under their bylaws, are they required to be quite as transparent Freedom as of we are? Act of yeah. To them differently yeah. Or but again, like I think that's kind of a learning for me that they're just a slightly separate entity. But they were getting a lot of requests from people to put some of their studies and stuff online. So again, that's where I think pushing it to their site gave you access to more details um, where you could actually look at some of the studies, which I think people felt strongly that they wanted to see, which Again, that's where it's like, I don't know if the town post that stuff going forward or what, what would be the right approach to make sure if there's information that voters want. Is it the sponsor website? Like for the schools, they have a building committee website. So is that an acceptable link? Mm -hmm. And then if we do a community center, I'm assuming that's all going to be on a special web page that we would put together for it. But it's all around the sponsors trying to put the information out there to get hopefully voters to decide what's the best choice for them. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I, um, yeah, I mean, the, the library is unique in a sense, mm -hmm. right? Because it's an independent nonprofit that's largely overwhelmingly funded by taxpayer dollars. You know, this would have been a, a publicly bonded project. Mm -hmm. But if you recall, we had this conversation at our communications committee meeting, and we would, I think, at least one, if not multiple trustees here, and we really made the conscious decision to say, we're not going to be, we're not taking on the responsibility mm -hmm. to educate the, um, mm -hmm. the voters about the project. We will refer people to you, and, and your information you provide, voters can bet on their own. It's what I think is legitimate, fair, honest, accurate, whatever. Because it was really their their responsibility to advocate for their project, and um, so that's why that's where that link came from. Yeah. Like we really we didn't want to muddy the waters. Well, here's mm -hmm. the town information for your project, and then there's your information. And <coughs> to April's point, I, I don't I don't I mean I think there is a fine line there, and there's certainly um, if you delve into materials, whether it's the turf and track project, right? I school budget every year. There, um, you know, yes, oh, sure, right? um, and you know whether people feel like that information is the full picture, whether there's different avenues to pursue, is really it's a tough, it's a tough line to find. But I think that that was really the conscious decision. In large part from this committee to say we're referring voters to the library website for the information. If they don't think that the information is, is accurate or representative, then they can challenge the library on that. They can choose to vote no. They can seek more information. It's up to the library to try to, and they obviously didn't need that, mm -hmm. right? Um, they didn't inspire the confidence of the voters. It was not a supportive project. And so whether that's a a product of them not providing enough information or just all of the reasons why people express some concern with that. Mm -hmm. um, I think if a town project, I think is different, right? Um, town project, we, that's our kind of project, if you will. It's our obligation to provide information to appease the, the voters, the community that is worth supporting. Um, but we see this in everything that goes to ballot. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fire truck, the ladder truck, it was materials produced by the fire chief saying this is defending and advocating and supporting why the voters should support a million dollar fire truck. Mm -hmm. He's not putting in there, well, you know, I don't think we really need it. Or, uh, you know, that's, he, he's recommending yeah. it because he feels like it's needed. And so um, I get, I get the concerns about, you know, the library wasn't offering up a counterpoint to their project, um, but it's, I don't really know how to do that in a different way. 
-hmm. Well, the one thing I think we didn't do, which I think would have definitely been questionable had we done it, is they did form a separate pack. Mm -hmm. And had we linked or anything to the tax material or content, I would have that would have no, been. So I think we're just, very so much just about yeah. the project, project information. Yeah. Nothing said which way to vote. Yeah. And I think that's where, you know, it probably would have been. But that's that, this is just the danger of, of this. And I think even what you just said, Councilor Slater, about um, you know, even advocating to vote yes, it's like, what is the right line of what town employees, school yeah. should be using taxpayer dollars to advocate on versus sharing information? And I think it's a fine line to mm -hmm. say, like, what's yeah. advocacy versus information, especially when the sponsors are the ones coming from the town or, or some sort of a public entity. So um, that was very much a topic in the turf and track project too. We mm -hmm. met every week and developed the content on the town page um, right. with the consideration of what is this language? How is this information being presented in a way that is entirely unbiased and just project information? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sure. for the town, to put library to develop content on the library project on the town page, it just it didn't make sense when the town when the library information could be, yeah, redirected yeah. from the library. Mm -hmm. And we hosted all of the turf and track, but that that mm -hmm. felt like like a because I remember the video that was done mm -hmm. associated with that. Yeah, so again, the condition of the track. Yeah, so again, like that was. That wasn't posted on our site, right? Was that on the schools because they were sponsoring? It was it? on our site okay. with in collaboration with the school. Yeah, no okay. services to this That's right. Yeah. It. So the, even the school, the we're looking at the relationship between the town and the school is not the same thing. That's right. You know, the, the school department is effectively a department of the town. Mm -hmm. um, with the same tax and the same entity by all. Um, so even that, so that's why the library is unique. Mm -hmm. um, Yeah, I, I, I understand the concern. I, I agree it is a fine line. I think it's something that almost on a piece by piece basis um, needs to be looked at in terms of is this advocacy, is this information? Mm -hmm. um, and it gets really the more information you seek, and especially when we go into discussions about um, what the cost is going to be, you know, and the variables with that. And um, there are some things that were just unknown. And uh, when people, I think, raise some appropriate questions and concerns with that. Mm -hmm. but, but, you know, someone who misinterpreted or someone who perceived the the fact of the best information available as not being the full picture or disingenuous or they had a different way of calculating that same thing, like, you can, you know, I'll talk to you. Mm -hmm. um, if it's okay, thank you, Councillor Slater, I'd like to open it up for public comment on this topic sure. since we have special guests here and I don't know if we have any on the line <coughs> who may want to weigh in on this conversation. So. I'm just going to open it up for public comment if anybody has anything they'd like to share to say. I'll just, I'll just go ahead. Mm -hmm. Although um, yeah. you're not addressing the fact that the library link uh, was to raise money. So you are directing people to a link where you could look at the top of their website and there was a link to support the library. So you were sending people to a nonprofit fundraising site. And if the library was so unique, which it is, I don't think the proper thinking was done by just that one example of, but you sent, you clicked on it and it said support the library. You click and you can send them money. How is that not advocated? By so you're saying by having that it's go a little bit deeper for that point because I'm trying to follow you. So like the fact that they had donate here, which is also on their primary site, they are a nonprofit. Well, exactly. Yeah. So that's my like, point. They're a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. They're out raising money. That's what nonprofits do. Why is the town? I mean. But most people are smart enough to think, oh, well, the town is for this. Mm -hmm. How could you not? It wasn't limited to just, you know, here's a teeny tiny description of the 
I think the challenge ultimately for me will be like, if you're a voter, this goes back into the finance committee, right? Or the council meeting where it was like, the, the town has an obligation, in my opinion, to ensure voters have access to information and direct them to information. And had we not had a link that gave them access to more information from a public source, from a sponsor, how would they have gotten access to it or how would they have known where to go to get more information? Like, I guess that's the question I would have is, if we just gave them a little snippet, how would they have gotten access to all the studies, all of the well, assets and things? Not to contradict you, they did not provide their studies. I think it's been for yes. So that's a yeah. fallacy. But eventually they did post it, so it did take a while and it did get some encouragement, but eventually it was put on their website. So that's where I think, again, it might not have been timely, like I would agree with that, but it, it should have been a lot faster. But the fact that that was their, um, that was the place to go to to get that type of detail if people wanted it. And had we not provided the link, I personally feel like we would have been holding information from people and even harder for people to find information that they might want access to. I'll, I'll jump in. Um, and I, you know, definitely a perfect example. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and also very much appreciate the invitation that you extended uh, to come. And, uh, and, uh, Appreciate you open a couple of comments during the conversation. Uh, uh, I, you know, and I don't know enough about what your question is to know to you know, mm -hmm. so offer any feedback. But my two cents is that's not really your problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's not your responsibility necessarily. And um, and. Um, and you know, I understand you're, you're doing public service and you feel as though it is, but you might take a step back. It could be a suggestion I'd have to make and say, if we don't do that, um, what's the downside? And you just pointed that out. And if we do do it, what's the downside? And then sort of weigh those. And, and there's nothing, uh, you know, as the, as the uh, Nonprofit mm -hmm. that we formed and the pack that's within that nonprofit, the Scarborough Alliance. Um, we, we did due diligence on this argument. We didn't do any huge, deep legal dive or, you know, or anything like that, but we did some due to legal due diligence. Mm -hmm. And we were left with the understanding that. That uh, there, there, there is gray area of concern mm -hmm. that if if you wanted to, and I don't think we're on. There's an avenue towards scorched earth here, mm -hmm. which might lead the town. Um, what's the word? Exposed to the to the. For this one example of that sort of thing, well, nobody has an interest in that. My interest, and now I'm only speaking for myself, if I'm still making sense here, and that is, and I look back on the September 7th meeting and heard you again on your questions to Tom and, and your follow up, which was crystal clear, and you know, I wrote down. From my, from my own edification, and Tom was very clear, pardon me for the, the town manager was very clear. I don't see it as town responsibility to advocate, certainly, mm -hmm. nor educate on this. And that pretty much sums it up. You know? mm -hmm. But um, here's where the rubber meets the road for me, for me. And that is obviously, we watch these things more closely than mm -hmm. the general. Residents, so you know you have to consider that. And we're not, so I'm not coming from that point of view. Actually, when I hear this, is my point. When I hear the councils, and almost to the last council, whether you voted for the library referendum being moved forward or not, mm -hmm. but let's just say the ones who voted for it to be moved 
forward toward referendum. The last person said words to the effect of, all oh, we're doing is letting the public decide. And very, you know, okay, well, if that's all you're doing, mm -hmm. and you're the council, and you have responsibility over town management, which you do, you can't have it both ways. You can't say that's all you're doing mm -hmm. and then put that link up on the town website. Mm -hmm. to, to my way of thinking here, you know, yeah, it's not all you're doing. Mm -hmm. You're doing a little bit more than that. So that's where you lose me, yeah. is, is don't say that's all we're doing and then post the link. Or do say that's all we're doing and don't post the link. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no, you're in the little bit of due diligence that we did with the attorney. Towns can do anything they want. Mm -hmm. You know, the state, I mean, you're your own. It's kind of wonderful. I didn't know that. I mean, there's, there's, I don't know if you can do anything you want. Well, well <laughs> but in, in, in this, in yeah. this, yeah. In this realm, yeah. it, there's some exposure to the town clerk, as I understand it, because mm -hmm. you pull the or the office is held to a kind of statutory something or other, and that's mm -hmm. where you might pursue something if you wanted to, but that's not the point. It's just from the seven. Mm -hmm. From the, when you're really taking a close look at it, not the general public, but closely, you know, play it straight. Yeah. So if we if we had done this differently, just to get your input, like what would you have recommended? We did. Is it sort of simply just posting the link went too far, but like the content that was in there was. You could find, you could ask the line. I mean, now I'm getting way out of my life. I don't know really ask for the question, but I'll, I'll stop it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You could, uh, with the library's permission, cut and paste from their website. I mean, it's not that hard to take content and put quite a lot of content. You're asking somebody yeah. to spend her time, with, which is otherwise valuable, spent doing something perhaps you can perceive more important. But, you can put that information up on the website. So building on that, I think what maybe we could have, should have done if we're going to go that route is um, we could have asked the library to create something specifically for our page that didn't include links to fundraising or advocating and just said, you need to, if this is going to appear on the town page, then it needs to be just the back. And so, and rather than put the responsibility of us to create that mm -hmm. from their content, just tell them, tear down your content, and this is what the town is going to put on our website. Or these are the things that we would support linking to. But even to your point, like I feel like, had it not happened, we still have the normal e news where I think they have they do have a library section where they are they have been communicating about this through that. So it's not like it was the first time. Mm -hmm. So I think because it was the special election, trying to keep it, you know, fairly unbiased, like I could I could see the perspective. Yeah. So again, I think it's just probably one of those things going forward for the committee and staff just to think about, like when we're doing election related things, just to make sure we're Check going through. Stuff. Yeah. Um may I say well, yeah. and to Mr. Gallagher's point, this is unique. I mean Right, I mean that's our understanding. We can have a five hundred one c three out there. No, that's you yeah. know you're advocating or not advocating for. Um, but the library will come up again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing, and I don't know technically if this would satisfy it, but don't link it. Mm -hmm. Get the website. Yeah, you know whatever the library dot gop. Or, yeah, you know, yeah. give them a phone number, you know, just don't put it live on your yeah. site. Contact the library for more right. information or something. Contact Nancy Crowell, right. the librarian. Like, they're, they're, yeah, I think there, 
we can think about that and we can just think next time. Like, I don't know if this is specific because of the uh, nonprofit, but even like thinking about some of the future things that might toggle that line between advocacy versus informing, just making sure, especially in the election, special election, special one. election edition of yeah. any communication we put out. Yeah. Yeah, and, 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 you know, we have a website too, and we're, we're not here because we're upset that you weren't fundraising for us in a certain sense. But, you know, if you're really wanting to spread the word, mm -hmm. uh, we're a nonprofit. We're not a 501c3, so if you gave us money, and I'm not quite like this old step on this line, mm -hmm. you wouldn't get a tax deduction. But that's the only difference. Yeah. yeah. I, I would just like to. Can you guys state the name, please? Yeah. The record. Oh, uh, 30 days. Thank you. Um, I don't mind being different than, than unique in, a, in some respects. I'm sure a lot of people think I am. One thing I'm unique and different about is, is I don't spend a lot of time on those machines. Mm -hmm. And I hope I'm not the only one older. Uh, Scarborough citizens and residents. So I, I do not search for all of this information that, that, that Debbie and, and Robin have and Doug Watson. I, I, mm -hmm. They've supplied me with, with information and I appreciate it, but I don't go hunting and looking. Yeah. So I, I think there probably are a couple more of us who were unaware of all of it. I would, however, add that. The, the town should be totally neutral in any project, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Uh, and I, what I'm hearing is you know, publish the information, but don't have a way that they can raise money from it. Mm -hmm. And I would agree with that because this is another project that I am just faithful about approaching uh, in the town. And I certainly hope, and I know there are a lot of people in this town who are. Uh, and in this uh, building, who advocate or have strong beliefs in favor of the downs, and at least that appearance to me is, 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 is they're quite apparent. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that there should be any uh, advocation, uh, provide information, but no. No uh, ups, you know, thumbs up for you mm -hmm. know them supporting it. Yep. So it's really it's really that notion of trying to find that fine line between information sharing and advocacy, which again I think in some cases can be more gray than others, but it, we can play it safe and just make sure that we're providing info. And then I think if counselors do anything, like we always express like if a counselor wants to specifically advocate for something. Through the emus, that it's their opinion, not the position of the council, just to make sure people know we can't infringe on people's freedom of speech, but we can give them an outlet if they want to share their point of view. I think that's just the other piece. I just want to be careful that we're not the town, I think, as an entity is different, but like, you know, counselors, if they for some reason want to go out and write a counselor corner on support for the library, that's within their prerogative. Yep. And so, okay. So I want to just keep us moving, and I, I would appreciate feedback too on Counselor Corner Live, because those have been something new that we tried this year that I think have been pretty successful, um, and I'm, I'm assuming it's something we'll want to continue. Uh, and I do think we've got managed to get some good people. We started to develop a core group of people that keep attending, and so my, my hope is we can find ways in the future to try and make sure we're bringing in more people into the conversation, not that the people who are there don't have valid points and opinions, but making sure that we try and think of how we bring in additional people. Like the first one was kind of huge in terms of turnout. Mm -hmm. I feel like they've slowly gotten smaller, but I think some of that has to do with the topics might not be as exciting or as controversial to get a, a drawing, but you know, even if we just keep it the same, I think that's great to give another outlet for people to come and talk, even if it's just a, a, a handful of people. But I, I hope that we plan to continue those going forward. We've been doing them bi-monthly. That seems to be like a good cadence. Um, again, any, any thoughts about how they've been going? I know one of Tom's comments was to make sure that, you know, for town 
staff is not a huge list, and I don't think we ask for too much. So, but if, if they become a bear or become complicated, I think that's where we want you guys to help us stay honest if we're taking too much time. I know, you know, the last one it was transportation, and I had invited Angela and the transportation committee with no expectation that they needed to be there, but just because the topic was transportation, it felt like a good. Like when we have committees involved in these topics to make sure that at least the citizen committees are informed and the town staff so they can help um, educate. I know, I think there were a lot of questions that were asked at the transportation one that I tried to field, but I feel like I did a pretty good job. I don't know if I did the best job, but I know I was like, what would Angela say? And so I was trying to like channel that, but I know she would have like been able to answer them a lot more succinctly, clearly, and probably provided more detail that would have helped. But I think that's like if the topic really does benefit from a town staff person who has knowledge in addition to the committee, I like having them there just because I think it helps, but it's not required. I I, I think just to your review, I, I I also like the counselor corner live segments. I think that it um, again around we changed the charge of this committee. You change mm -hmm. the charge of this committee from communications to communications and community engagement. I think that's the engagement arm of it. Um, I think it's, you know, I don't think it's, again, fine line balance, you know, I, I don't think the purpose is for this to be kind of a Q&A with staff. Yeah. I think it's an intended for uh, residents to come have an open dialogue with their elected representatives yep. to talk about their feelings about and I think a lot of it is you know we don't really know what the answer is yep. you know this is an intent, you know it's kind of like what are your so traffic and transportation turn enter a lot of concerns about specific traffic things you yep. know intersections or you know, a zipper formula you know, whatever <laughs> uh, and so yeah, I I think that I think that that's kind of like good organic yeah start of a conversation and i think that really what should be i think if we want to talk about enhancing it maybe there's an opportunity for the communications committee to circle back to some of those things yeah. with the help of staff to say yeah. here are some answers to your questions yeah. so here's what we're doing or here's some more information and so mm -hmm. um perhaps that's a way to enhance that initiative so that it's kind of it's not just a you know commiserating on yeah the challenges but also here's some additional information here's a solution how do we work that into a policy moving forward yeah. or a deliberate um and so i think that's the way that next again next iteration of the committee come back together and really um have that built in yeah very well. um with that said you know that might that might feel like a lot of work for the committee if you're doing that every two months that mm -hmm. follow-up um mm -hmm. because it's not just a open forum um and so maybe we do want to look at Again, especially since we kind of struggled with what's a good topic, maybe that does become more of a quarterly segment. Yeah, um, quarterly. but there'd be more, more to it. There'd be more follow up. There'd be more prep. Um, yeah, I, I do think it's been successful. I think that people have really, fairly responded. Yeah. At um, least but, not not. But this wasn't part of the plan, but it just worked out well. Where following the council corner, we had the transportation committee the next week, and Angela and Jen wanted to add a debrief mm -hmm. to the counselor corner mm -hmm. and talk about some of the stuff in the committee and align on the next step. So again, it would have been nice for people to know if that was the plan, like the official plan, hey, if you want to know what we're going to do, the transportation committee is going to be talking about these mm -hmm. at the next meeting and identify maybe one or two things that they might want to dig into further. Mm -hmm. And so trying to figure out how there's a connection point to action, to your point, I think is a good point. It's not just us listening, it's how do we convert that mm -hmm. into a couple of key takeaways that we would want to then give to somebody, whoever is the right. If we identified potential committees ahead of time yeah. and said, okay, Councilor Corner on September 22nd is going to be on traffic. We see that they have a transportation meeting five days later. Can someone get in touch with the transportation chair and request that this be an agenda item for that night? You know, and then to to you know you guys' point, then as we're wrapping up for that night, say this conversation, you know, this conversation and, and a debrief of this conversation is going to happen at the committee level, you know, on Tuesday, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um so yeah, uh, so um 
I, I guess I, I didn't really see that parallel until you just brought it up, as I understand it. I, um, you know, as we kind of developed this um, biannual, I guess, biannual committee newsletter, um, and there's been more discussion from, I think there's been more workshops of late between committees and the council. Um, you know, we look at the topics we've done, obviously growth was, you know, kind of the issue du jour or issue of the last three years. But, um, you know, we did want on sustainability and conservation. We did want on transportation. Um, maybe as we look to explore other topics, maybe there's some opportunity to look at what other sort of um, council committees or, or town committees there are. And what is the underlying issue? What's the focus yeah. of that committee? And maybe there's more of a community dialogue where, of course, there's the invitation for those on the committee to participate or come and do some of the listening to join mm -hmm. the But maybe that's an opportunity to look that we get more engagement from our committee with our council and with our community about what work we're doing and why. Um, that might be a good way to also look at future mm -hmm. topics. Yep. Um, so, okay. It also shines that council light on the committee work, which is mm -hmm. I know was a goal of ours as a council. Yeah, you know, part we have a we have a parks advisory committee. Yeah. Um, you know, so what are they doing? What's their initiative? Um, and what's the community feel about their parks and the recreation program? Um, mm -hmm. I think that that might be one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Again, so you so the council's engaged with what work they're doing, the community knows what work they're doing. How to participate or change the yeah. I think this almost becomes like a mechanism to not like recruit, but like for people to learn about these committees. Because mm -hmm. that was one of the things that I kind of said at the end was if you're really passionate about this topic, mm -hmm. you can submit an application for the committee. I think there's two openings coming. Apply if you want to keep the conversation going. So it's a good way to kind of find people in the community who's passionate about a particular topic and then help direct them to a way to get more engaged, not just come to this meeting, but if you want to get more involved, we have options that can help you get more involved as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, again, I think that's the yeah, spirit of engagement. You're pulling, mm -hmm. you're pulling community members into and you're engaging with them on some of the committee work that we're doing. And that's one of the reasons why we've developed this newsletter, right? Mm -hmm. To, you know, we try to do two things with this newsletter in the newsletter. We're trying to tell people what they what work's been done in the communities mm -hmm. and what they envision doing. Um, so it's kind of look back, look forward, and um, again, that kind of gets at the heart of this uh, frustration we hear from a lot of people when uh, somehow finally, you know, the the local newspaper runs an article on something that's going for second reading in action with the council, and people say, "Whoa, I don't like that." Where that? When did that start? You say, "Well, go back two years and look at when it started at committee." You know, and I went through. Committee formation discussion. Then I went to ordinance committee. Then I went back to council. Then I went to planning. But got bounced all around, but no one. So I think that that's an, another way to try to engage people yeah. in what they do, why they're doing it, and where it starts. Yes, yeah. I think it's really important to get. Like I love seeing people come to our committee meetings, our council committee meetings, but that doesn't happen very often. But it's always good because I think it's just another avenue to hear a deeper conversation in yeah. some area that you might not yeah. get to. I think finance is probably the only one. Yeah that gets attendance, uh, especially in budget, but mm -hmm. like, you know, trying to make sure people know that they have other options to get involved and share things is important. Do you have a, a comment? Is it okay? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Um, I have two comments. Mm -hmm. One was about when you were talking about the newspaper or the, not the council corner live, but the council corner. Mm -hmm. um, I, um, it, it would be wonderful uh, to see, to have you, you were talking about planning things out for a year almost. Mm -hmm. Well, you have obviously sit in the unique position to understand what the next year is going to look like. So, and it would be wonderful as engaged citizens or even less engaged citizens to sort of see that charted out and to participate in it as it's being uh, uncovered. And so, all the planning that you could put in to thinking a year ahead or supposedly it would be, I mean, you're in such a powerful position in communication. Nobody's going to find anything out unless you tell them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I I think you have a real opportunity to not to only control the message, but to, you know, create the message. Mm -hmm. 
And as far as what we were just talking about, I think I heard you say this, Dan, and that is when you're communicating, communication is like a bugaboo, you know, it's one of the hardest things you can possibly do. And you think you're sitting around with somebody you know and you realize that she has no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> It's really, really yeah. hard. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, my one trick is to identify the audience you're speaking to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you just said that you're the audience of these people who all of a sudden run away that on the news one time. Well, that, that's, a, that's really important. And there, that's not maybe the only audience. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. So next is the website. So in terms of the website, I didn't really have much feedback, except it's much better. I don't think we've gotten any complaints yeah, that I'm aware of. I'll chime in. So it's, yeah, it was launched in March of this year. It feels like it's been way longer yeah, than yeah. that, but yeah, it's only been since March. And um, Brian, the webmaster, he said that uh, some things to highlight are that the search, the, the mm -hmm. search functionality has been used less. So I don't know if that means that it's easier for people to navigate from the home page. Yeah. Um, there's a small link to a contact us form um, at the bottom of the home page. He said that's been used a little bit more. And um, we also, prior to this new website, didn't have that project what's happening page. And he said that's been well trafficked. So people are definitely using that. And then also just from my own perspective, I just think visually it's a lot yeah. more, appealing, more modern. So. This, this might fit into more item five, but you know, I, I feel like there probably still are some features, at least in like council communication that maybe we're not leveraging. Like I had the idea and I think I sent you the email when I went one day and noticed the pop-up pop -up, and it was yeah. the first time I noticed it. Like that would be great to think more about like Wednesdays, especially when we have a council meeting, can we pop up there's a council meeting at six o'clock right, tonight, like here's the it. agenda so that way people don't have to look for it because it's just like another easy way to put things that people might be looking yeah, for naturally. Yeah, yeah. Is that why you're here? Here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if that's all you want, here it is. Again, think, I, yeah. Sorry. I just thought that's it was why like, I visit on one. Yeah. Or like <laughs> even when the e-news is published, like sign up for like here's the latest e-news, sign up here. Like it's just another way to kind of get people's attention. I forget what the pop-up was. Like I'm the worst when it comes to pop-ups. I always just exit. Yeah. Right? I, I don't think you're alone. But I think we should be strategic about sure. how frequently yeah. we use it and what we're using it for. But I do agree with you that now that we have that, we should be using it. And it doesn't just need to be on the home page. It can be on other specific pages too. But mm -hmm. you saw it um, a couple of weeks ago because we did like a little marketing campaign around email newsletter signups. And uh, that helped tremendously. We had a Facebook ad going at the same time as that for like one week or maybe two weeks. And we got like over 100 drivers just in that time period mm -hmm. we never normally do oh wow Great. yeah mm -hmm. so i kind of want to be that's an example like i don't want that up all the time but right. like maybe like part of it we do like a week where it's up like that mm -hmm. what do you think is like a good target to have for any subscription because it seems like we're up to what like 3500 yep yeah we have 3300 and then i think the town included or sorry staff included it's like 3500 but i, I feel like there's what 8,000 households in Scarborough, and I would assume some people don't have both people in the house because a lot of times, right. like when we were handing out the cards, like sometimes people would be like, "Oh, I don't have that, but my husband does," or "I don't have that, but I know my my wife does," because she's always like saying what's going on in town. And so again, like if we really wanted to set like, set, like a real goal to right. ultimately be at like 5,000, not right away, but like, is there a goal you have in mind that? Um, I, I've always thought that it's kind of low. I feel like it's grown a lot just in the past two years. So that's telling that there are more people that always have more subscribers and mm -hmm. it's not always geared towards residents too. I think a lot of people who work in town to benefit from it. Yeah. Um, so I think 5,000 is realistic. I don't know in what time frame, but yeah, um, I was shocked. The number that the library threw out yeah. with their subscribers. So it was like 9, I, it was or something. very, very high. I couldn't believe that they yeah. had that level of email mm -hmm. subscribers. So, I wonder if they like, like, the library <laughs> cards, like, yeah. automatically. 
maybe yeah. mm -hmm. maybe know. but yeah was there anything like that, that to register their vehicle yes yeah, that's what I, mean, I was thinking right like or get a dog license i know we have the cards on the table right but something should we have your excise clerks really push it? Like, you want a Macy's card for that? Yeah, there you go. Incentive for how many fish drivers they get. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a pizza party at the end, like the reserve, and selling it. Any, anything else on the website? Any thoughts? My only other comment on the website, and, and this isn't council communications related, but I have heard this from some of my committees and so I'll share it, is um, just getting some of the archived materials okay. up. Um, I'm, I'm hearing some frustration from some of my committees that work that they had done in the past has not been updated you know, to the website. And so, so it wasn't just, carried over from the old yeah, site for anyone? Exactly. Okay. Yep. And so just staying on top of that. Okay. I think that's the challenge too. Is like I, I've been trying to use board docs more to look for council stuff. And I think it might be same. the same thing. Yeah. Like we a historical. So where where are we supposed to go or where are we supposed to be directing people to the historical stuff? Good question. I, I admittedly uh, don't know. I guess I, I wasn't um, aware of that. I don't know where we stand with moving over yeah. content yeah. from the old platform platform to the new platform. Mm -hmm. Um I agree that that needs to be there and that really defeats the I mean. One of the benefits for this platform was the searchability uh, right. for things like that. So you can search uh, growth management ordinance and pull up all of the materials on the mm -hmm. GML and not have to. Um, so we can certainly check in and next month report back out to the community yeah. as to where we stand with that project. I think, yeah, I think piece. board docs is a little bit on hold right now mm -hmm. and hasn't been launched yet. Mm -hmm. But as far as archived um, material, on the, material on the current mm -hmm. site, and this comes from our colleague Susan Hamill, who said she wanted to send you something today. I said, No, let's stick with the one thing. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's her, it, this is to her credit, and it's very true for those wonky among us. When you look at a town council agenda, mm -hmm. And it's 150 pages long, mm -hmm. and you're trying to focus on the GMO uh, piece of it that you offered in the last agenda. Going to page 150 mm -hmm. and printing those three pages, scanning them, creating your own PDF so then you can send it to an interested colleague. Mm -hmm. I know it's possible to link each item separately on the agenda so you can sort of go there mm -hmm. and talking about links and that's mm -hmm. the, that's uh, a suggestion that may create even greater community involvement yeah. and yeah. use of involvement. I know in the are you talking about in the actual packet itself or when you go on the agenda there's 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 only the, one way to get through to the I think they're looking at the one. the PDF of yeah. Because Cody does put this on this side, yeah, that allows you to like quickly jump to the so item. there are links to the separate items. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's a way to copy. I, I don't know if there's um I don't know if there's a way to copy the link that's embedded. I do know that in order to see these tabs, you need to download it. Yeah. Right. Um so you, right. Um so this well, is two fairly involved people miss that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah, no, it's so, not it's not so, intuitive, I don't yeah. think. And board docs is supposed to make that easier right. too. Even yeah. the forward facing public mm -hmm. board doc, when you click on the agenda, I'm signed out right now, but if you go to view agenda, it it you know kind of brings each topic as a one list. But okay. you have to be in board docs, not on the um, uh, I heard that will, yeah, yeah. Again, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that might be a communication thing for next year is to like make it like what's the ease of use to get to so if you go all the way down yeah. where it says council meeting and agendas if you keep going down where it says view on board docs yeah that right. gives you that interactive agenda okay well i feel like an insult <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah we haven't there's, highlighted there's, that at all we yet. haven't exactly. we haven't it, launched it really, and we yet. just did training on it and is, is there are there links to the separate items that way okay yep. okay so 
Okay. No, yeah. no, that's great to highlight. We 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 really haven't done um, any education on that. Like I said, we just got trained on it. And what will be what will be really great in the future once it gets rolled out mm -hmm. is that you can actually search. So you can search for GMO and it'll pop stuff up. And depending on what's available in the packet, when you click it and open it, it'll show you the pieces in the packet. So that that way, like if all you care about is the GMO. Mm -hmm. right. That will be an easier experience, I think. So I think it's coming. It's yeah, just, yeah. that feature is, yeah. is available, but um, it hasn't. And it only hasn't for been. council. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, not yeah. Committee. Yeah, 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 not committee meetings, only council. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I, heard, I heard that. So that, that could be an initiative next year. Like, Again, more of like an ease of access of information for the yeah. committee to explore if, yeah. if and when this is ready to share more, at least for the council stuff. Because again, it's, I think there are people that often go like when Tody created that PDF search, that made my life like yeah. so much easier because that was a relatively new thing, I think, that yeah. she did last year that yeah. wasn't she happening before. Down, I the only other thing I've heard about the website, and it's not about the website itself, but it's more. Like most of the emails I get related to the website, but I tend to forward to Allison and Cody or when people are not getting things posted in a timely manner in terms of the notes and the live stream. So I don't know like what our internal policy is on like how quickly are people supposed to do that, who's responsible for doing that. And are people just aligned and aware that hey, you know, we shoot for like within five business days to have that up to date and it should be. So that's that tends to be the only time I send you anything is when I get comments from people where they're looking for something and it's typically related to looking for meeting minutes or the link to YouTube. And I often yeah. go to YouTube, find the link and just send it to them because yeah. I know how to find it on YouTube. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um but again, that's just that's just more of like a something to be aware of that it seems like it doesn't seem to happen all the time. So I don't think it's like a pervasive issue. It's just that's the feedback I get more is when I can't find a link. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't, I, I certainly am unaware of any general internal standard or policy about mm -hmm. um, publishing links or, or again, minutes usually don't go up until they're formally approved, which usually means mm -hmm. a meeting. But, um, you know, depending on the committee or board, it's different staff is responsible for it. And so, okay. Um, they may have their own, you know, we have a different person for board assessment review and planning board and council mm -hmm. and subcommittees. And, um, and so it does vary. It's probably something to look at potentially, not potentially, but specifically if there are issues and concerns with the timeliness of it. Um, but, you know, that combined with the website and board docs, I mean, there are a lot of initiatives underway that we're mm -hmm. trying to make progress, but. Uh, it does require training, and then once we get staff trained, then there's a whole education piece. And so, I think you know, my only comment on the website, because there's some kind of comment on everything here, uh, <laughs> is uh, I have heard really good feedback yeah. from people. Yeah. Um, of of um, a lot of our, you know, we've done a lot of recruitment of senior leadership team of late, and um, more often than not, they talk about perusing our website and being really impressed with. And so, this is kind of the outsider perspective in terms of the. Uh, ease of navigation, the amount of information. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it has come leaps and bounds yeah. just in the last few years. Uh, and a lot of that work was kind of driven or, or recommended from this team. Yeah. Well, you guys in the town staff have done an excellent job on this. Yeah. Allison and, and um, Brian specifically mm -hmm. have done the lion's share of this. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. All right. So next item on the agenda is, you know, do we have two or three big ideas for next year? I mean, we've talked a little bit about board docs and just helping make it easier for people to navigate and find information, but even just some of the tips and tricks that people weren't aware of that offer a lot of value. So there's that opportunity. Um, one idea that I had that what is not my idea, it's something that's come up a few times in the past, but it came up again this weekend, so I thought I'd share it. Was like, how do we, like, we have so many people that are very engaged. Um, would there be value in thinking of trying to create some sort of like communications ambassadors within the public that are really there to help push out town information that we know have 
networks that are influencers that we want to make sure that, hey, if we send out the email, we'd like you to push it. If we're doing a council corner, can you make sure you're sharing that? Can you recruit a person to come to Comfort Corner? Like, and again, I don't know exactly what the solution is, but this notion of uh, ambassadors in the public, mm -hmm. either in neighborhoods or something that kind of just make sure that we're getting the information out through individuals that that are paying attention, but also have some influence, but like formalizing a little bit mm -hmm. to say that there are, you know, 15 people in Scarborough that are our go-to to say, hey, we just posted something. Can you make sure you're sharing it or talking about it or looking at it and making sure that you know what's going on? I don't know, I just thought it was an idea. Cool. That's definitely something that the next communications team can take on, mm -hmm. at least explore the idea more or hash out. I don't know what the composition of the next committee will be, but yeah, I think that's a good suggestion. So yeah, I like that's thinking was. Yeah. I also don't, I'm not letting go of this canvassing idea yeah. that we had. <laughs> I would like to bring that back up with the with the new committee. Um, the timing may not have been right this fall, um, but, you know, to some extent, I think us as counselors are ambassadors and we should, you know, put some miles on our boots every once in a while. Yeah. So um, I think that that's an initiative that I would like to see the communications committee hold together for the spring. Mm -hmm. um, Yeah, that first council corner live that you did, I remember you were saying like if we could each bring like two people if it's their neighbors, like among counselors, we did that and you got a good turnout and it probably had something to do with that too. So just kind of having that energy behind the yeah. other yeah. Um, events or topics. Well, that's that's where I'm hoping like if we had other people who we could ask to help with that, right. like more on the engagement side. Mm -hmm. like, to me, the engagement side is harder to like get people to care and come in, but I felt like people who I'll talk to directly and said, hey, would you mind coming because we want people there and we want to make sure and I think you'll have something to say. So yeah. I feel, feel like everybody knows people like that. But if we had a group who, like I think can think of a couple of people off the top of my head who I'm like, they know everybody in Scarborough. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we just said, hey, would you mind just like sending a note to like three people and saying, hey, you should really come and that you're coming. It might like get people to participate. Mm -hmm. Um. I also think like the one thing I think that John did well as chair was he would always kind of send us an update of what was going on. Mm -hmm. And I feel like something like that for the public from the chair might actually be good. I know we have the the space. I don't know if we've ever really figured out how to leverage the space we have for the council on the website. Yeah. Like what are the That's things we can do, I think too. Because I, I could see the chair just kind of giving like a quick update of what's coming for the public. Maybe not the detail in the emails that we get, but at least just kind of giving a, hey, we're having these conversations and these things are moving. I mean, it's all public because it's an email, but just making it more publicly viewable might be something because we have that council outlook piece. That right. Mentioned, and so that's council article. Yeah. Yeah. But there's opportunity on that page to build it out more. I think right now as the goal for the year, but mm -hmm. also, yeah. Yeah. I think there's something there. Yeah. I also yeah. think there's opportunity for more um, kind of overlap. Like right now there's the council corner um, article segment of the newsletter, but also like the items on your agenda whenever you have a meeting, there could be some overlap of that communications on that from counselors, not just in the council corner articles, but kind of like through video we're talking about or through um, other channels or um, just ways of putting out information that kind of like right now the town newsletters are more like deadlines on the assessing application, dog licenses, that type of thing, but incorporating kind of the, the issues, the bigger topics in town. Yeah. Um, and is that something you would look to this committee to help give recommendations to on like looking month out based on what we know is happening? Like these are some things you might want to spotlight or just Yeah. And I I think that would be helpful if we had a place where we could kind of talk about that and brainstorm mm -hmm. um creative approaches. It also depends on um personality of what some people would want to be on camera and other people, maybe not so much, things like that. Um, mm -hmm. but I think 
a lot of people in town probably don't even know who their counselors are, who's on town council, and it's just a way to like add personality and put a face to a name. Mm -hmm. um, and not only a face to a name, but the back story of what what are the issues you care most about, and why why did you even come on to town council, and um, what are you looking forward to, um, you know, advocating for? And, yeah. Does the does the um, email or online version of the e news allow you to embed like little snippets in it so that instead of it just being static content, rather than doing a council corner live where um you know like karen was a good example like instead of her writing something yeah. you say hey we're going to do a two-minute video we just want to cool. tell yeah. you or you want to thank the residents and you want to say why you're excited and it's just a different mm -hmm. format that might get more people to like even right kind of mixes it up a little yeah. too um maybe they can see it differently um we have the option of like being able to link to a youtube video okay. but you can't watch it right in the okay. email mm -hmm. yeah. What about when it's posted on the Yeah, it's it can be embedded on the website. Okay. Yeah. That might work. As a public person, the only way we know what's coming up mm -hmm. is we wait a week before when the agenda comes mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way we can know. And believe me, I don't think a lot of people go hunting for the agenda just for just to town council. Mm -hmm. I mean, because it's like, well, what are they gonna talk? About what's coming up? There's yeah. no way for us to know mm -hmm. until one week out. Yeah. So if you're really following an issue, it's like you're waiting the agenda until Friday out tomorrow. <laughs> Let's see what's on <laughs> it. Let's do it. Yeah. So yeah. if there's any way you can clue people in earlier, yeah, then maybe you can. But that that's how it works out here in the land of not knowing what's coming. Yeah. I do know how to get to the agenda. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think that could be an opportunity. Again, I don't know if it would be specific, but it at least might be directional of like this month. These seem to be the topics that are making some traction that will likely show up on an agenda, but may not may may not make it on there because of other things, or maybe it's not ready. But I think just making sure the public knows that these are some of the things mm -hmm. the council's addressing, like the Comfort in, I feel like, would be an example of something that seems to be a theme that we're always addressing. And I don't know if the public knows that. And no. even, yeah, because yeah. it's only being addressed in the council meetings, yeah. Yeah. not among other council meetings. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. You have any recommendations? You had the yeah. good idea box or faculty last time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, some of the, some of those ideas, I think, were a product of trying to make it. Um, you know, because I, I think we've got some feedback that, you know, just reading an agenda, you know, it's like it's incumbent upon someone to know what council's going to be talking about next week by, by going into a link and, and looking through it. And then we talk about, again, depending on uh, a counselor or the chair's interest or openness to doing some video content. I mean, it would be very easy to do a 30 second spot for the chair on the camera say, you know, tune into next week's council meeting. We're going to be talking about and hit the high point. You know, yeah. We're going to be talking about the comfort. We're going to be talking about uh, a GMO exe exemption. We're going to be talking about a change to this ordinance or a new ordinance. You know, meetings at seven. You know, with a link. You know, it's yeah. very easy to do that. That's far more digestible. It was put out on Facebook, put out on Instagram, uh, put on embed on the website. Um, some of our other ideas were uh, not only advanced but a quick debrief. You know, last night, last night's council meeting. This mm -hmm. is what we talked about. And because there are some things that you know, most of the time we have an idea as to where things are going to go, but sometimes we don't. And even if it's where, you know, it goes where we think it is, what's a, a 15 or 30 second spot that we agreed to move for second reading this, or yeah. uh, this is coming up on the next agenda, or there wasn't any decision on, you know, I think little snippets that we can push out on electronic media uh, to, mm -hmm. I guess, complement some of the other stuff. Um, that EV charging one right. last week is a good example of something right. that I think if right. people have more knowledge yeah. of something like that happening. And I think that's the communication challenge is, mm -hmm. you know, you, some of the stuff, and again, it's, it's the challenge we have with, I mean, there are people who, you know, say, I'm not going to, I'm not going to open up a PDF to go read it. I'm just not, yeah. you know, so they want a little snippet and then maybe there'll be something in that 30 second spot to say, okay, I want to know more about that. Yeah. yeah. So now I'm going to yeah. go chase now this thing. Now I'm yeah. going down the rabbit. Yeah. And 
Um, so I think that that's the, and doing it in a thoughtful way so that we're not doing, you know, it's just finding that right balance. Mm -hmm. um, the only other one that I guess I would um, suggest or recommend to the communications committee or the council, because I think it, it, you know, in terms of the frustration that we hear from the, the community when decisions are made that people don't, don't agree with. And I think every counselor that I've worked with, any elected official, whether it's select board or council I've worked with, generally has a pretty sound reasoning for why they voted the way they did. Mm -hmm. And um, and again, I think I, I commented that both of you in the open meeting do this really well, but time doesn't always allow for everyone to speak their piece. I mean, April, I think you do this better than anyone. You sort of say, you know, I hear the concerns on the other side of this issue. Like I, I hear that the project's too big or the, you know, the timing's not right, or we have these other things and I hear all that, but this is how I'm voting and this is why. I think there's a real opportunity to develop some content around, I think I characterize it as explaining your vote, you know, or mm -hmm. uh, sharing your perspective. And I think that will, I think that will build some understanding with the general populace that sometimes I think we lack um, because people just see the vote on an issue that they don't agree with. And, and I think people hearing, you know, at least as far as I hear your concern, and I'm not discounting it. I just think that this issue, this, this, these things weigh more heavily for me, um, I think might go some way to building some understanding yeah. and explanation. So do you think that's more of like just some training and education that we could do as a council that would say, like, how do you how do you effectively share your decision-making process in the public setting? Or are you thinking it's more like post-meeting Someone documenting somewhere why they voted the way they voted. I, I think it's. I think in that in that specific example, that's kind of a post vote, you mm -hmm. know, because I think that you need to kind of be open to what, how a meeting, decision, and deliberation goes. I think it'd be uh, presumptuous or premature for someone saying, you know, this is on the agenda for Wednesday. I'm just how I'm voting. I'm yeah. Voting. But mm -hmm. I, I think um I think when Alice and I met, I think we were we were interested in exploring developing some specific vehicles, if you will, for counselors to choose to kind of. Um, employ when they mm -hmm. when they feel the need to you know yeah. um and so here is the and again and people can do it or not just like you know people can go to the uh, a website and look at information and feel like it's valid or not i mean people can you know, counselors say i think it's really important that my constituents understand what my rationale was and how i vote and why i voted that way um or people can say you know my vote stands and i'm not gonna you know, kind of Clarence Thomas approach to the Supreme Court. You know, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to issue cast my, my vote. But I, I think it's important. There's a couple pieces there, Liam, that I really like. One is I think that we need to identify what those vehicles are mm -hmm. so that we can educate the council on what mm -hmm. those vehicles are mm -hmm. and then kind of gauge where different people are going to be. But I, I think that this lends itself to a council goal mm -hmm. of you know, even if it's out of your comfort zone, like let's all commit to exercising at least one of these vehicles once a month mm -hmm. or, yeah. you know, just an engagement goal overall for the council and give people <laughs> options for how they can do it and make sure that they feel comfortable and know what their tools are. But mm -hmm. um, I, I, you know, I think we can get people on board. Yeah. I think there are certain cases where that level of sharing our thought process is super important. But like if we're approving a license or something, like I don't think we need to. Yeah. But you are the king of this, your prerogative. If this is what you yeah, say, use really. your vehicle. And ex counselor wants to go on there and say, I thought that approving that business license was a good idea. Because and that's their video, then and that's what we've asked yeah. them to do. Yeah. Yeah. And that, again, obviously, the 7 L vote on things, this is a good, I'll be so far as you go and justify. Yeah. But I think what we've heard from some of the folks who've engaged around engagement and, and being heard, right? People want to be heard. And even if they don't agree, I think that's very different when they feel like at least their their perspective, their points are being validated and they're understood on some level even if they come to a different conclusion. Mm -hmm. So I think that so that's that's I think where I think a lot of our interest is with regard to council communications. I mean that kind of staff communication is a whole different yeah. thing, but Council communications, which really is the focus of this committee. Um, how, what can we develop? I.e., you know, so we have the counselor corner live, where it's an engagement. We have the counselor corner, um, but what other things can we develop 
for counsel to say, you know what, I have an opinion I want to share, or I, uh, whatever, what can I do with staff support to get that out there? Yeah. I mean, I even just like the idea of like something simple that could be following the council meeting as long as people aren't too tired, which is, hey, this was a issue where there were, there was a split vote. Is any counselor willing to just kind of get up and say, hey, it was four three, mm -hmm. and I was a no because of blah, mm -hmm. but I understand from hearing from the other counselors why they voted blah because of blah, and like just again having a way to kind of get the information out there so that it's at least fair. Mm -hmm. I kind of think it's also for people who are the general public who's not following along and not even watching the meeting, but then they see a snippet of kind of an explanation of something that happened in the meeting that night, and they might not have even known that it was happening. So yeah. For those who want to feel heard because they are expressing and they have been very involved, but also for those who this is kind of like their way to be involved for more of the passive um, behind the scenes, yeah, social media. One, one other thing, people, that we've talked about that might be worth discussing as a council, even at goal setting potentially this year, could be when a resident sends an email in, like what is our communications yeah. process? Because is it, is it, if somebody responds and you feel like they met it, that you don't need to respond. Because I do know sometimes people, they look at us individually, I don't think. They look at us mm -hmm. as counselors. So they'll say, well, I heard from Counselor Slyther, but I didn't hear from anyone else. They so did I think, not hear from Counselor Slyther. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but the challenge <laughs> is that about email. when we respond, we're not supposed to be responding, right. representing the council. We right. can respond with our own view. Yeah. Okay. And so I guess that's the question is like, do we encourage people? Yeah. I think that's respond? a good conversation to have yeah. at the council level just to see if there's alignment on even how we all think about our email. Yeah. Just to gauge where everyone is. And then if there's more conversation that comes from that and we kind of want to yeah. develop a protocol for responding that the public is aware that this is what we agreed on as, a group of, as this group of seven, then I think that would be great. I don't know if that, if there's consensus around that, but yeah. Just, just I mean, the public. I mean, it's just about letting the public know what the expectation is when yeah. you email the council. Are you going to get a single email? Are you going to get four? Are you going to get one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we shouldn't be deliberating on email. Though. That's the no. Point. We don't want to no. give I don't think the that perception. So that's where it's like kind of a fine line of just being clear on like, hey, someone responds and you feel it's good. Do you at least just send a thank you? But then some people will respond and say, I don't want to thank you. I want <laughs> more so it's kind of like if you're going to respond yeah, yeah. You, you also could work on developing a i don't think that this happens but you can certainly set an email function people would email the town council if you come to an agreement on what you want that constituent to hear you know thank you for your you know you could set up an automatic reply mm -hmm. uh run a general statement you know please know your message has been received I, I mean, you can really focus on some of it. There's some expectations set in that regard, too. Yeah. I think those people just generally feel like if they take the time to send an email, sometimes they really are looking for a real person on the other end. Like, I know sometimes when I've sent emails to like state reps or other ones, like when we get to Canton, I'm like, that's not what I wanted. I wanted yeah, like the but, actual acknowledgement of my concern, which again, that's a di whole different level. But it so, doesn't negate it. It's just, yeah. I mean, it's sort of like, uh, you know, if you're a part of a job, it's like a receipt that they got it. Yeah. And they'll be in touch if they want that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so it's just, um, I, th I think there's a, it's not the solution. You know? Yeah. It, it could be something that, that sets an expectation. Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, great. Any other ideas? So these will be just, I think, you know, for the next committee meeting, depending on who's there, refreshing or making sure that the new members have this list as a starting point. They can hopefully decide like which ones, like, there might be a couple or there might be a few that rise to the top that they may want to pursue. All right, um, next item is select Council Corner live topic for December 22nd. So because we're doing these on the third Thursday, that's the date, um, which feels kind of late with the holidays and stuff. But I feel like for the consistency, it's probably good to keep it on the 22nd, would be my thoughts. But are there any pressing topics that we may want to suggest at this point? Um, one thing for awareness, 
that we're still working through, and I think we have a conversation tomorrow, is for the GMO updates, there is a desire to have a public engagement portion of that probably in December. So part of me was thinking that December 22nd date, or if it's a different date, could meet the council corner um, box for, for this month, where again, I think the intent is to really just have an open forum to get feedback on if we're gonna update the GMO, what are the things top of mind to the public? So that could be, that could be this, but not, I don't think we would do it on the 22nd, we might try and do it earlier. Um, so that's one potential topic, or again, we could still just do it on the 22nd too. Um, the other thing that I thought about, which it could depend on like what happens tomorrow is because I think the building committee had also asked us at some point to do a joint council corner live with the school board potentially on the new school. So that's another topic that could potentially be December 22nd if we wanted to shoot for that. So those are the two that are kind of top of mind for me. I think that December 22nd date is our, is a, our date is a rough one. Oh, the yeah. kids have yeah. school. Yeah. The kids the kids get out of school on Thursday and then they're on Christmas break for the rest of that week. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think probably a lot of people will have be on their holiday onto their holiday plans that evening. Um, so myself included. <laughs> so I don't know about the 22nd, but holding that date. Um, I do think engagement with the school is a great idea for a council corner live. I think there's some good crossover there in terms of um, communicating to the community that this is something that the council is involved in, that we want to have these discussions with the town, that this is not just a side project that's happening. Um, and so I think that's good to have that level of um, engagement on that. Um, I also think that you and Nick are on a timeline for the, the GMO. And I understand that if that is, if that, if you feel like December would fit a timeline for you and Nick and be really productive for you and Nick to have a open discussion on the GMO, then I think that that's good. I think that would be my preference only okay. because I think I agree. We're, we're trying to get feedback in December from the public so that we can bring that back to the council in January and say, Here's what we heard from all these yes. stakeholders. I think that's smart. I think also the school building project is going to be right toward the end of maybe site selection. Yeah. And it may be ben more beneficial to have um, that public discussion after the site selection or to explain the site selection just so that the whole emphasis isn't on site selection. Yeah. Um, Can I say something? Yeah. That, um, Consolidated school versus neighborhood school. I think you. I think. I think the jumping from where the general conversation is around our kitchen table and around that group kitchen table is. You know, we all for consolidated school, but uh, not to bring up recent memory, but that rabbit hole we just went down in the library and that kind of thing. And, um, I think there's a lot of um, sentiment for consolidated schools among people who might not understand quite yet that that's not an option. Mm -hmm. love it. Neighborhood school, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. unless you want to pay twice as much or something like that. Uh, so I, I think you forgive us for jumping in. I think the GMO is way you want to have a separate thing. I think you have a big. Uh, what's the expression? The big uh, hurdle. Yeah. Hurdle. Uh, to, yeah. To bring the people who are just dying the wool, we want neighborhood schools into the fold so you don't run, you don't go through that whole thing and have yeah. the whole thing go up like it's Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that one will actually potentially draw more interested people from the public to that perspective only because. When, when I was standing at the booth during the election, mm -hmm. they did get some pretty good foot traffic. And, you know, people were kind of making some statements like, 
before you even put a number to it, the concept of a consolidated school is just really hard for me to accept with little kids yeah. doing that. And so I think there is a, a little bit of an emotional hurdle yeah. and having a forum to be able to understand that. And again, if that follows, we have a workshop this week. So with a workshop this week, it may just be good to say, hey, if you're coming with us, watch the workshop. because They're going to share a lot of information, I think, that may be pertinent to the conversation. And then we can have a conversation with the public about, so tell us why, how you feel about the concept of a consolidated school. Mm -hmm. um, and just kind of keep it, keep it on that topic. But we can definitely raise that maybe before we put it to the council. So that they need it yeah, we could raise that, we could raise <laughs> that there tomorrow and then talk about whether that's something that they want to do. I know they were interested in doing it earlier. I think I had originally recommended February for some reason. I can't remember why. But we can we can talk to them and see what they think before we make the recommendation. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's a strong vote that the council is going to rely on it. Yeah. So that will be, we'll be, we'll be a show of hands for who wants what. Mm -hmm. we'll bring in. Yeah. That'll be interesting. A big crowd. You say Wednesday night is the school? It is. We have a school building committee, committee meeting tomorrow night, and then they are presenting to the council on Wednesday. Yeah, which will be a really good There is. There's a lot of we're, we're, we're everywhere. We're, we're everywhere. We're tonight. both tomorrow. So today, I have two. Tomorrow, I have two. I'm there two. tomorrow with two for both. So. <laughs> I did a, Mr. Hall announced that there was also a something to do with the downs. Yeah. At five tomorrow night. Tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Is, that a, is that open to the public? Yeah. I think it's at the throttle car club. Uh, yeah. I believe that it started at 5 30. So it's like anybody's welcome to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The way he expressed it, I, I didn't know whether it was just confined to the council. Oh, no, it has not. It's not a council activity. It's, yeah. a, it's a down yeah, it's activity. Yeah, well, I'm just tap himself in the back and tell him everybody what a great job they're doing. <laughs> I don't know what they're going to say. All right. So I'm, I'm going to skip item seven public comment unless there's anybody online. Since we've had our Great public panel, participation yeah. panel today, which again, you know, this this kind of is like an example to me of the concept I'm suggesting of if there are interested residents who want to know what's happening in town, who want to help communicate, it's just a good way to invite them into this forum because we're ultimately here trying to engage and communicate. Yeah. So having yeah. people participate like today, I thought was really helpful. So thank you guys for coming. I appreciate your participation. All right, item eight, future agenda items. Tackle this giant list that we yeah. have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a new well, yeah, wish, some formation yeah, committee, right? The, yeah, so they should. Mm -hmm. And then item nine is adjournment. Not so moved. Second. All those in favor? All right, unanimous. Thank how, you. How is your Facebook following? Is that pretty good? Yeah.